Are you having trouble with lines and different things in your print? The extruder's not putting out enough or putting out too much? Well, today, join me as we do E-Step calibration on a CR10, but the mathematics works for pretty much just any filament printer. So, see you guys inside. As I said, we're going to be looking at calibrating our printer, specifically the E-Steps today. So why am I bringing this up? A lot of times Creality and a lot of other brands do a decent job in calibrating your E-Steps. So you don't have to when you get your printer and a lot of people don't look at it. But it's one of those things I've started running into this. Lines, under extrusion, it's just not coming out right. And quite frankly, what it's causing is this frailty it's not a problem in my slicer it's not a problem with the filament it's an actual problem with the extruder of how much filament my printer is putting out because what it should look like and sorry the light's probably not helping me here it should look nice solid and pretty so we got to fix that now a lot of times a lot of people don't do this and sometimes you don't need to if you're happy with your print it's great but this can help remove some li the lines it can help remove, it just helps clean up your print, especially if you're doing itty bitty stuff. So E-Steps is one of the things that you can do here. And I'm gonna do a separate video on the second piece of this, which is calibrating your flow in Cura. Cause that is another change that you would probably wanna make, looking at how much filament it's pulling through and just making sure your flow rate's right too, because that can also lead to over extrusion and make things look bad, or it could lead to under extrusion if your flow rate's not high enough. So it's one of those things, it's definitely something we gotta talk about and look at. So today we will be going back to a CR10 V2 to do this, cause I have one sitting back there available for me to work on. And you're gonna need a few tools for this. You're gonna need a calculator, you're gonna need a Sharpie, and you're gonna need a pair of digital calipers or just a pair of calipers um, to measure the filament for what we're gonna do here. Cause we wanna get as precise as we can and a caliper is the best way to do that. So and we're gonna take this stuff, we're gonna go back, we're gonna make some marks on our filament, and we're gonna extrude. And we're gonna measure those marks, and then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna do a mathematic formula that when we get to that point, I will put the formula up on the screen for you to help us figure out what my actual E-step needs to be, and where we can change that, whether it's in Cura or it's on the machine itself. So I do apologize ahead of time. We are gonna be working on some of the video back in my shop, so you will hear the other printers running. And there are 10 of them, so it might be a little hard to hear me. I'll try to make sure the audio as best I can. Um, I may redo the whole audio piece. We'll see. Uh, it may just be a voiceover. But keep that in mind. I am going to be in an active working shop when I do this. So um, keep that in mind. The process is pretty much similar on any filament printer. So whether you've got an Ender 3 or a CR10 V3 or a V1, it's going to be a very similar process. So... Um, like I said, I'm doing this on Creality machines today. Most machines have the E-Step option available on your printer. So kind of keep that in mind. I do need to do this to my Odin 5. So if you are curious to see it done on the Odin 5, please drop that comment down below because I am loving that machine. Um, that direct input drive and everything, that Odin 5 is just a really great beginner printer if you're thinking about Christmas coming up. It is one I highly recommend and link down in the description below to that printer. But also, there's links down in the description below for a print that we'll use um, to me do some measuring with. Also, calipers, there's a link down there down below as well for them out on Amazon too. So kind of keep that in mind if you don't have a really good pair of calipers. These are the ones that I recommend. They're down there in the description. But we'll get back there and we'll get the measuring and we'll get this done. So, but before we do that, guys, if you're curious about 3D printing, getting into 3D printing, have questions about 3D printing, hit that subscribe button. So this channel is geared towards beginners and getting you guys going and printing and showing you how I do it because there's actually a ton of ways to do this. My way may not be the perfect way. Other people have different ways of doing this too. But my goal is get you into printing, get you going. So that's kind of one of those hard things to do is that hardest part. Once you get into it and get going and get your first couple prints, it's pretty, pretty simple. But we all run into problems that we don't understand, like this, like these poorly printed pieces. Um, I figured out what was wrong and knew what I needed to do to fix it. So, and I want to share that with you guys today. So please hit that subscribe button. Any questions, hit that, hit that comment button, leave a comment down below. Remember to leave a thumbs up on the video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And also, you know, thanks for coming by. 
I do appreciate everybody that watches the video. So let's hop over and let's get to working on that printer. Okay, I know I said we're going back there, but one last thing before we go back there. Again, let's recap what we need. So I'm using my phone, but you need a calculator, calipers, preferably digital if you can get if you have them, and you need a Sharpie permanent marker to draw the lines on the filament. So we're going to head back there. We're going to measure 100 millimeters from the edge of the extruder out so that we can get, that's our 100 millimeter feed. But then I'm gonna make a second mark, 10 millimeters past that, just in case this printer's E-step actually has me over extruding. So that way I can do the calculation as well. So we're gonna go do that right now and then we're gonna come back, we're gonna do the math. Then I'm gonna show you how to set that E-step. See you guys there. Okay, so you guys can see, we actually have a filament sensor here. So I'm actually gonna do it from the filament sensor. That way um, I can get the measurement. So what I'm gonna do here is take my caliper. Well, I wanna measure 100 millimeters. So I'm gonna reach back here. And from there, I'm gonna figure out where my 100 millimeter point is. It's right there. I'm going to mark it. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my caliper 10 millimeters more and make that mark from my sec from my first mark. So that means 110. Try to get that as precise as you can. That second mark is just in case we over extrude. So now we'll move over to the control panel and actually extrude, extrude this. Okay, so we want to extrude this. So we'll go in here, we'll go to control. Well, first we need a preheat. So while this is heating up, I need to go back, and go into control, go to temperature, nozzle. My average print temperature is 210 to 215. So I'm going to preheat that up to my print, my temp. I'm going to go right in the middle ground at 212. So I'm heating that up right now. So once it's heated up, because that's the key thing, you got to heat this up. You can't extrude filament unless you're heated up. So I'm going to let this heat up and then we'll catch back in a sec. Okay, so we're up to heat. So we're gonna go to prepare. We're gonna go to move axis, and we're gonna go to extruder. We're gonna go to one millimeter. And we're gonna go to 178.4. Because mine already had a 78.4, we wanna add 100. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna tell it to extrude, which is gonna push out a bunch of filament, but what should happen is if it, the E-step is correct, I'm going to pan the camera here, if the E-step is correct, that line that we made right there should hit right at the end of the, at the end of the uh, filament sensor. Now if you don't have a filament sensor, that's going to be your extruder. So kind of keep that in mind. That you, I'm just using the filament sensor because that's where I can easily get to and it'll help me measure that distance. And you can see it's sucking it in, because there's our first mark right there, pulling it in. So we want to see how much it pulls through, how um, much it's still extruding. And, you know, unfortunately we waste a, some uh, filament, but this is all for a good cause, because basically we want this to be as correct as we can make it and basically right now we're out of calibration and this is the exact printer that gave you that gray ball that just looked wrong was that one so this is going to help us get smoother thinner and better lines so and i'm just kind of keeping the filament pulled off but you can see it's pulling it in right where we want it to and if it ends right where it is then my e-step is right where i want it but i've got a feeling we're not going to get there 
because it looks like the extruder has stopped moving. So, as you guys can see, whoop, my extruder rate is not where it should be. So, what we need to do now is measure how short we came up. So according to this, we came up roughly 18.9 millimeters short. So we're going to head back in the other room. Okay, see. so we know I'm coming up 18 millimeters short of feeding in 100 millimeters. So that shouldn't be right. If my E-step is correct, it should have eaten all 100 millimeters. So we need to we need to calculate the new E-step to get this correct. So by default on a Creality printer, the E-step is 93. So what we need to do is take the current E-step times 100. So that's um, 100 times 93, which is 9300. And don't worry, I'll be, you know, numbers will be coming up over here. And this is where the calculator comes in. So what I need to do is take that 9300, so 18, so I extruded 82 millimeters of filament, so that's that number is important. So I was 18 millimeters short, so I extruded 82 when I should have done 100. So what we're going to do now is take that 9300 and divide that by 82. That should give us our new E step, which for me on my printer is 113.41. So now what we'll do is we'll go back to the printer, we'll go to control, we'll go to motion, and we'll go to E-steps, and we'll go to the extruder E-step, and we'll enter in the 11341, and then we will do the same process again. And this time, it should take all 100 millimeters perfectly. If it doesn't, come back to the math board and do this again. You may have to do this two or three times to get this right. So I'm going to take this back there. I'm going to be right back. Um, I'm not going to show this part because it's just I just want to see if it will feed correctly. But I will show the part of me changing on the control panel so you guys can see how I did it. But for Creality, um, now, I got 113.41 for my printer. Every printer is different. So the gears, they may be done identically. It could be the filament you're using. Um, I use inland filament for 95% of what I'm doing. I do test other filaments, like I'm testing Jerry, I'm testing some Sunlu filament for them right now, and I'm testing some Esun filament and resin actually here. So it's kind of one of those things, the filament can matter too. So do this with your most common filament settings so you know what you're doing right. But I'm going to go back there and set this E-step, and then I'm going to test it again and see what I get, okay? So be right back. So here we are back in the printer again. We're going to hit our button. We're going to go to Control. We're going to go to motion, and we're going to go to steps, and we're going to go down to our E step. And for me, when I did the math, I need to change mine to 113.41. So I'm going to be spinning for a little while. Now, you may not have to move this much. You may only have to move a little bit. But I need this to go where I need it to go. And we're almost there because we got an important step once we're here. 113.41. Alright, now we've got it in there. So you got to go back. And you got to go back to control. And you got to store the setting. If you don't do that, it's not going to save it. And that beep says it saved it. So I've saved it. So I'm going to go through that first process again and see how it comes out and then go from there. But I'll be right back with you guys to talk about flow. All right, guys, so that's calibrating your E-step. So this is going to help with your lines. It's going to help make sure we're getting proper extrusion. And it's just going to help your printer work the way it's supposed to. So the 93 millimeter is the default for Creality. Obviously, my printer needed to go up to 114, which kind of blew my mind a little bit. Um, I'm also using PLA Plus, so it may change various on different materials that I'm doing. So kind of keep that in mind, too, that it's just what's best for there. So 
You may have to go into cure and also alter your flow. You may see more blobbing or stringing and stuff like this. So kind of keep that in mind now that you're actually extruding it properly. That your flow may not be correct in your slicer and you may need to do that. I do plan on doing a video about adjusting your flow in the upcoming week, so stay tuned for that. Also, if you enjoyed what you saw today, hit that subscribe button, join the crew as we do all kinds of things. Um, I'm really kind of gearing up for Halloween right now because, uh, well, there's all kinds of helmets you can do, props um, to go with your costume instead of buying it. Print it! That's the whole point. That's the fun of this is getting to make your own prop, customize it if you want to. And we're gonna start talking more about that too, about customizing and making your own models with ZBrush and different other programs like that. So stick around, join us, and hope, you, hope to see you guys in the next video.